Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and I've finally gotten my hands on a 7800X3D, thanks to my supporters for making the purchase possible. And the first thing that I wanted to figure out with this CPU is how much cooling does it need? Because if you go to AMD's specs for the 7800X3D, uh, you'll notice that it has a 6 degrees Celsius lower max operating temperature than all of the regular Ryzen 7000 chips. It has a relatively high TDP at 120 watts. It's worth noting this is not a power limit, this is like a cooler like cooler capacity number um and amd doesn't include a box cooler probably because a you know like a box like the, any cooler that they could include would actually be inadequate for the cpu at least that's usually what's implied with cpus that don't include box coolers like say the 7950x which has a 230 watt power limit or the 17900X, which has the same power limit, or say a 13900K, 13700K, 13600K, right? These are all CPUs with very high power limits, and so they don't come with stock coolers because uh, the stock cooler is just not going to be able to cool those CPUs. Um, so the 7800X 3D's specs page sort of gives the same impression that this thing's going to be really difficult to cool, but it isn't. Um, as it turns out, a Wraith Prism delivers basically the exact same performance as a 240mm AIO. Admittedly at much higher temperatures, right, 86 degrees instead of 77 degrees, but I would like to point out the fact that 86 degrees is less than 89. Therefore, we're not even hitting the thermal, like, we're, I'm, in my testing, I didn't even hit the thermal limit. Um, I think throughout testing, the CPU was constantly riding the voltage limit, rather than really any other limit, because I I didn't notice it, like, hitting a specific power consumption number and just not boosting past that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think the chip is basically constantly voltage limited throughout testing, and consequently, even a Wraith Prism can actually do a perfectly good job of cooling it. Now, admittedly, in kind of ideal, ideal operating conditions, because open air test bench, 20 degrees Celsius ambient, right? If your ambient air temperature is significantly higher because you live in a warm climate or because your case has miserable airflow you're going to find that my results here are not really like you're not going to be able to re you know cre recreate these kinds of results uh with a higher ambient air temperature which is probably why amd doesn't include a box cooler but uh yeah i was really expecting the the 7800x3d to just like ride the thermal limit with the wraith prism and it just kind of doesn't uh, and also that 86 degrees, that happened in Cinebench. That's the only test that actually got that hot. For some reason, Cinebench uh, pulls, like, consistently runs hotter than Linpack, even though it doesn't really pull significantly more power. So I guess Cinebench has some kind of, like, hotspot thing going on that doesn't affect Linpack. Um, which, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. Um, might need to do more testing on that, but the, the immediate, like, the... The initial conclusion is basically like, yeah, if you're buying a basic air cooler, right, like a twenty to forty dollar air cooler, it'll handle a seventy eight hundred X three D just fine. Because the Wraith Prism isn't a particularly good cooler to begin with, right? Like, uh, uh it's worse than your typical four heat pipe one twenty millimeter fan single tower air cooler, um, because it's four heat pipes except like folded up to be you know low profile, so. Yeah, if you buy like a 120mm single tower, that'll get you even better thermal results than what I'm getting here with the Wraith Prism, and uh, it's not really going to be very expensive, which is really cool. Um, yeah, it, it's like, that I think is my favorite thing about the 7800X 3D right now is like, it's a high-end CPU that compared to all other high-end CPUs doesn't require stupid amounts of cooling, right? Like a 7950X, thermal throttles on basically everything. Like, it's just... It's not really, like, yeah, like, the 7950X, you basically need a custom loop to get it to stop thermal throttling. The 13900KS is the same. You need a custom loop to get it to stop thermal throttling. Uh, the 13900K, basically, not as bad as the 13900KS, but similar. 13700K, very similar. Uh, and then you get the 7800X3D, where it's, like, literally a Wraith Prism delivers the same performance numbers as a 240mm AIO. Right, like we are seeing, like the biggest performance difference here is one percent in a short lin pack run. Um, that's what the the long here indicates is that like this was run for like this was run for over an hour, so the AIO would actually thermally saturate. That's not really a concern with the air cooler because it doesn't have a lot of thermal capacity. 
Uh, these long Lin pack runs were actually like just over 15 minutes. So not super long, and the reason that these weren't super long is I did the Cinebench test first, and the, the Cinebench results were like, okay, so in, in, in like an hour of Cinebench, they basically performed, the, like the AIO and the Air Cooler performed the same. So, you know, running Linpack for an hour well, is going to show us the same results, basically. So I didn't bother running this for more than 15 minutes, and we still, you know, so that might actually be... Like, like some of the, the uh, advantage for the AIO, <laughs> it's not really an advantage, but it is, like, it is very consistent. Like, Lin, the, the results are very consistent, um, but, yeah, the, the actual, like, performance differences are 0.78%, um, which just isn't noticeable. Um, but, yeah, so that like that that slightly more significant advantage for the AIO here could just be due to the slightly shorter test your actually it's not slightly shorter but the shorter test duration this is a really short test so this is like where the AIO gets the biggest advantage from the extra thermal capacity and even there it's like 1% <laughs> So it's like, okay, yeah, this the, the AIO just absolutely makes no difference for a stock 7800X 3D, assuming that you have low ambient air temperatures for the air cooler to work with. Obviously, if the air temperature was like 40C, Cinebench and like Linpack would be way down. Actually, even the AIO would really struggle because if you added 20C to this, it would be at 97 degrees Celsius. Like, fun fact, with, with coolers, you can generally like... If your ambient temperature goes up by 20 C, your operating temperature will probably go up by 20 C. Actually, for water coolers, that is very consistent. Ra uh, heat pipe coolers can react a bit differently. But with water coolers, if your ambient air temperature goes up by 20, uh, 20 your water temperature is going to go up by 20. And your operating temperature is going to go up by 20. So... Um, yeah, now the neat thing with the AIO is obviously you can use run an AIO as intake and then it's immune to, say, the heat output of your GPU if it's inside a case. Whereas with an air cooler, you're going to have to come up with some like clever airflow management to achieve the same kind of result that you can get with an AIO just running as intake. Um, and you're running the AIO as intake with a 7800X 3D actually is if you're going to put an AIO on it, I don't think it's particular, like, it's not particularly cost effective, but hey, if you just want to put an AIO on it, uh, the nice thing about running the 7800X 3D uh, with the AIO as intake is that since the 7800X 3D really doesn't pull any power, it's not going to sit negatively affect the operating temperature of your GPU, right? Whereas with something like some of the higher power draw CPUs out there, they will actually noticeably increase the air temperature if you use the AIO that's cooling them as intake. Um, so that's kind of kind of that. Or you can just do what I do and run an open air test bench and then the GPU's heat output just goes into the room in general and doesn't directly cook the CPU, right? And then you don't have to worry about like, oh, am I going to prioritize GPU cooling or CPU cooling because like th there's no, you know, airflow restrictions because it's an open air test bench. There's no box to contain the heat. Um, but anyway... Um, yeah, so Wraith Prism on a 1700X 3D, actually surprisingly viable, and I'm kind of surprised that AMD didn't even, like, they could have, I feel like they could have totally included a Wraith Prism as a stock cooler for the 1700X 3D, and it wouldn't have been a completely terrible idea, but I guess they're safe, like, I guess they also make some extra profit by not including a box cooler, because, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's that. Now, there is one place where the 240mm AIO does have a significant advantage over the Wraith Prism, other than just the max temperature, which is Curve Optimizer. If you want to mess with Curve Optimizer, which I think is a total waste of time, but there are people who like to do that, so, you know, more power to them. Uh, yeah, if you want to mess with Curve Optimizer, more cooling helps your stability. Basically, these settings over here uh, would just not work on the Wraith Prism. Like, Cinebench would just straight up crash. Uh, whereas the 240mm AIO would run them. It would even run Y-Cruncher, uh, but minus 30 curve optimizer, that wouldn't run Y-Cruncher. And also, I didn't stress test these settings, um, like, at all. So they could still be unstable, but they're at least more stable on the Asatec AIO than they are on the Wraith Prism. So, um, yeah, the one downside to them is, like, the only really noteworthy performance gains are, like, single-digit percentages, again more substantial than what we saw up here but yeah single digit percentages 
and only in the highest load scenarios, so like Linpack and All Course in Avenge. And the issue I have with this is the 7800X3D is sort of like a gaming CPU. Linpack All Core is about as far away from a gaming workload as it gets. It's like a scientific compute workload, um, is, is the closest like real world analogy to what Linpack uh, Extreme is. Um, and so a 4%, you know, like a 5-ish percent uplift in Linpack on a 7800X3D, in my opinion, is kind of irrelevant because why are you running Linpack on your 7800X3D as like a regular use case? It makes sense to run it as a stress test, but as a regular use case, like, do they not make like server CPUs for that? I'm, I'm pretty sure they do. Um, so yeah, that's... That's kind of my, my thoughts on, on cooling the 7800X3D. Like, if you want to mess with Curve Optimizer, which I don't particularly think is worth it, you're going to want more cooling. But if you just want to run the CPU at stock, uh, you can basically air, like, like you can air cool it just fine. You don't need an AIO. Uh, you can almost certainly get away with like a 20 to $30 single tower 120 millimeter air cooler, and it's going to be just fine. Um, actually, if you're upgrading from, like, a 3700X or something, and you already have a... Actually, when did AMD introduce the Wraith Prism? Yeah, if you're, if you're upgrading from a CPU that came with a Wraith Prism, you could literally just keep using your Wraith Prism, assuming that you make sure that your case doesn't turn into a hotbox anytime the GPU is running. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... There, that's, that's, uh, that's the cooling considerations for a 7800X3D, which is... Not much. You really don't have to worry about it very much because it doesn't run very hot, uh, which is really cool. So, literally cool. So, yeah, that's it for the video. Hopefully this is somewhat helpful. And uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with Actually Hardcore Overclocking, uh, I have a Patreon and a Bandcamp and a Teespring store. There are links to all of that down in the description below. If you check them out, that would be much appreciated. And yeah, that's it for the video, so thanks for watching, and goodbye. Oh, no, where's the mouse? There's the mouse. Okay, goodbye.